Navy if cruiserweight crowns are at stake. Those belts are held by 28-year-old O'Neill Bell, born in Jamaica. He moved to the United States at a young age, 20 wins as a professional, and 19 knockouts. O'Neill Bell will take on tough Kelvin Davis tonight. Bell is a guy who takes on all challengers. On Friday night fights in September of 2001, he squared off against former world champion Arthur Williams. He would drop him in the fight. He was up on all three judges' scorecards, and Bell would finish things off with a TKO in the 11th round. After stringing together three consecutive wins, he had a rematch with Williams on Friday night fights last November. Round number one, the former world champion, Williams, would drop Bell with that right hand. Bell was trailing on all three judges' scorecards as the fight got to the later rounds, and Bell started to put his punches together. He hurt the older Williams and would finish him off with a TKO in round number nine. So O'Neill Bell is ranked eighth by Ring Magazine. He's ranked number one by the WBC with Wayne Braithwaite in his sight. So why fight tonight? Well, there's no way around it. As far as I know, he's, um, he's the mandatory for the USBA, and I wasn't about to vacate my belt so he can have it. I mean, I fought to get here, have three three titles, NBA, NABF, and the USBA. I don't see why I should just vacate and give it up. I'll fight to keep it. He's going to have to fight to fight to get it. Like Bell, 24-year-old Kelvin Davis got a late start in the boxing game, only seven amateur bouts. He has a record of 19-1-1 with 14 knockouts. He is the former USBA cruiserweight champion. On Friday night fights in May of 2002, he squared off against Tipton Walker, and he really put his shots together and finished Walker off in the seventh round. That set up a big fight on Friday night fights in August of last year against Rave Springs. Springs used his jab very effectively in the fight. Davis really had no answers. He was outboxed, and when the judges' cards were tallied, Rave Springs walked away with an easy 10-round decision. How does Davis win this fight against the taller Bell? Let's set the strategy, starting with Give Him Hell Bell. I see the fight going going my way. I'm not going to let him get off first. I'm not going to let him dictate the fight or or be the, be the authority of figure in there. It's going to be all about me. I just have to be on my P's and Q's on point at all times. You got to use a jab, one, you know, blind his vision, get inside. And that's pretty much the thing you have to do. If you don't use your jab, you gotta use your head. You know, that's movement, movement's everything. You get inside eventually. I mean, nobody can run for 12 rounds. What well, I know about Davis, um, he mimics his style after Tyson. Same height, try to throw the combination. I guess the same attitude. I mean, if you mimic your style after ignorance, you're gonna be ignorant. If he, I mean, he's not intelligent in the ring, you're serious, I'm gonna have to school him. At the age of three, Kelvin Davis's family moved from Mississippi to Reno. Mills Lane, legendary referee, got Davis a start in boxing. A former high school football player. And at Sacramento State, also a football player, 19-1-1. See his last five after that loss to Springs. He bounces back with a win against Rogerio Lobo. Teddy's tips for Kelvin Davis. Teddy? Well, Kelvin Davis is going to try to take that title. Coming like a young Tyson, jabbing and moving your head. You're too short to just walk in here. Time you're coming. Use the jab and not just one. Double it up to close the distance. And number two, well, if you're going to get inside, make sure you don't get tied up when inside. You work hard to get close to the taller belt. Make sure you don't let him clinch. Keep your hands free and keep those punches coming. And number three, get him in the loop. You like the long looping right hand. The time you can throw it is when you get him pulling out. That's when you can throw that looping right hand at the right place, the right time. You're going to have some success. Davis, a former football player at Sacramento State, O'Neill Bell. Also a high school football standout. Living in Atlanta, Georgia for the last seven and a half years. Born in Jamaica, 21 and 1. 19 knockouts in his last five. He's gotten two wins against Arthur Williams. Had that draw, technical draw against Ernest Mateen. What about Teddy's tips for O'Neill Bell? Well, Bell, if you're going to keep your title, don't give up your height. Maintain your distance when you punch by setting your feet and not falling into the shorter man's distance. Stay outside. Number two, win the jab contest. Obviously, if you have a size, which you do, and reach advantage, no better way to use it than by using your left hand. And then the straight right hand will become effective later on. And finally, hands up all the time. You have a dangerous puncher in front of you, a guy who 
is not afraid to wing them. You have a habit of dropping your hands, especially when going back. This can be dangerous. Make sure those hands are up and tight when you go out. Final instructions from our referee, Bill Marshall. Anything? There you go. Now we're good. Okay. Best luck to both of you touch them Let's do it. So O'Neill Bell putting his USBA and NABF Cruiserweight titles on the line. Now you know here at Friday Night Fights we've adopted Ring Magazine's ratings as the ones that count and there's so many alphabet soups that have these titles that you can't recognize any of them. The USBA and the NABF though are legitimate. The NABF was formed in 1969. It encompasses North America. In fact the first fight was a heavyweight showdown with Sonny Liston and the likes of Benny Briscoe and Sugar Ray Leonard and Donald Curry and Jeff Chandler have held NABF regional belts. The USBA was formed in 1976, a disgruntled, disgruntled faction from the WBA, and guys like Johnny Bumpus, Donald Curry, Sean O'Grady, Floyd Mayweather, uh, Roger Mayweather, that is, have held the USBA belts, which encompass the United States. So two respected regional belts. Two different styles here. One guy wants to be on the outside, obviously, Bell, taller. More wiry to short stocky short man Davis wants to be in close one thing that is the same they both have power punch, in their punches both can land a punch and change the bout around Bell rips a right hand Bell's going to want to see spots for that right hand set up by the jab he uses his jab right here get plenty of opportunities to use that straight right hand Two different places here get a chance, fell well, to use that straight right hand, in my estimation, Bob. One will be off the jab, setting it up. The other will be sometimes when Davis throws that wide left hook from too far away. Bell can get a chance to step inside that left hook and beat him to the blow. Bell was stopped in his second pro bout in the fourth round back in the Davis. He was dropped in his last fight against Arthur Williams, as we showed you. So he has seen the canvas in his career. He's also down against Jason Robinson back in 2001. You know, both these guys' physical styles, physical strengths, they try to make it an advantage. It can also be a disadvantage. What I mean by that is the shorter Davis always trying to come in control from too far away leave himself vulnerable now the taller bell can pull straight back even though he's the taller man and leave a lot of target when he pulls back being too tall at the wrong time so both guys with their physical abilities can make mistakes and sometimes let those physical abilities be a real disadvantage to them in Davis's loss to Rave Springs, according to CompuBox, Springs threw 472 jabs of his 671 punches. He stayed on his toes, stayed to the outside. Davis never figured out a way how to get inside. Bell was sort of hanging out in Davis's kitchen a little bit. Yes, he is. But the one thing that you don't see Davis doing while he's in Bell's kitchen, or his own kitchen, is keeping his hands free. See, it doesn't matter. You make a good point there, partner. It doesn't matter if the shorter Davis gets into the kitchen of Bell, if Davis doesn't keep his hands free and take advantage of being in there. He must not get tied up. He must punch. Hey, fish stick. Your SUV is pretty tough, right? Not when friction takes over, pal. Friction and heat cause stress and wear, which over time can make that little dinghy seem a lot heavier. Nice shooting, Tex. You need Quaker State for 4x4s, SUVs, and trucks. It's proven to reduce friction and deliver superior performance under high stress and heat. One word, pal. Carpool. Quaker State. The power to reduce friction. Don't make me send you the lab results. Oh, oh, give a deep grip. The, the corner of O'Neill Bell, John Smith, Don't the trainer. Up. No pride today. Let's box him. Bell move. taking on Kelvin when he slows Davis. Down, we'll come get him later. But right now, let's box him. Well, this coming guy. into this fight, O'Neill Bell felt that though, the baby. script was sort of already, already laid out against Kelvin Davis. To me, the blueprint is written. It appears he wants to be Tyson like. I'll turn into Lennox Lewis like on him. I'm going to keep him outside, bust him up. It's an easy victory already. We'll see over the next 11 rounds. Time! Come on, guys, let's go. He's cleaning out some stuff in the corner of 
Come in. Well, it again, it's the point you made the last round. A good point. Davis got in where he wanted to be. He didn't have a problem getting into the kitchen, as you said. Of Bell. The problem is Davis did not do enough eating when he was in that kitchen. See the numbers from round number one. Bell was six of 41 with his jab. That person, that person, bring it up. There's going to be two opportunities offensively for the shorter Davis. One is when he gets inside to work inside. He must work when he's inside. The other, I believe, is going to be able, once he's inside, to maybe force Bell to go back straight and catch him going back with one of those looping shots that Davis is good at chucking. As I said, both guys have certain physical advantages that are their strengths. Davis is strong and full like. He wants to be inside. Bell is tall. advantage become a disadvantage by letting the shorter Davis get into his punching zone we can catch him standing straight and of course the shorter Davis doesn't want to get caught coming in this is an interesting fight I believe even an intriguing fight this is the kind of fight that I'm curious to watch and I'm excited about watching both guys have power both guys can hurt each other yeah, and left hand and by both Davis. guys got to fight specific styles, Bob. And right now, Bell is fighting the fight that Davis would want him to fight. He's in close. He's not using his height. About 20 seconds ago, Davis caught Bell with a nice left hand to the chin. Even if Davis has some success here, he should not be fighting the fight on the inside with the shorter Bell. And on the other hand, Bell has to make sure that he makes the most of this on the inside. I mean, Davis. I mean, Davis, exactly right. Davis has to make sure he makes the most of it on the inside. And Bell should not be hanging out inside. Davis, I think, accidentally headbutted O'Neal Bell. As Davis was coming yeah. in. Huh? Stay right there. Accidental headbutt. Doctor coming up and looking at it. Accidental headbutt right here in this corner. Accidental headbutt. Referee right Bill there. Marshall telling everybody about the accidental clash of heads. Accidental. And is, accidental we can't see from that angle, but is Bell cut? Yeah, he got cut there. All right, so there's a bad cut on the right eyebrow of O'Neal Bell. Now, because it's an accidental foul, they only go to the scorecards after four rounds are complete. And we are only in round number two. Once again, the shorter Davis being allowed to get into his part of the ring he wants to be, in close. And no matter what happens, Bell's people cannot be happy. Bell got hurt. Those people cannot be happy that Davis is being allowed to be in close. Don't hit him on the break down like that. Bell got hit to a body shot and went looked down. Like, looked like his legs went. Yeah, Davis sort of took the wind right out of his legs. So Bell gets caught here in round two. Once again, Bell standing inside fighting Davis Four, to short a man's fight. Five, he does not belong in there. Six, we said it early on. Seven, eight, so seven, Bell hurt here in round number two. Bell, cut. Bell is helping Davis. He is getting into his punching area. He is not forcing Davis to work his way in. All right, let's go to the corner of O'Neal Bell. Give me the rag. Give me the rag. Give me the rag. Oh, oh shit. Where's the doc? Who's that cut? Who's that cut? Hold. Hold him anyway. Keep going. That's what it looks like. Damn, that's. Hold this. Hold this. Hold this. Oh, man, this is a fucking nasty oh, fucking shit. cut. Get back. O'Neal, you got to work smart, baby. You inside there. 
box in front of the house now. We got to win the next three rounds so we can go to the score card. We made the next uh, three rounds badly. Head and move. Head and move. Get focused. Come relax. on, baby. This is where you become a champion. You want to be a champion, this is it, man. I got you. The greatest thing in the world, you can get up off the floor and go out and take it. Come on. Oh, you don't take you 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 everything that he can do. There's the knockdown right there. You can see Davis in or Bell inside close to Davis, allowed Davis to land that looping right hand. Yeah, even the body shot knocked him down, Teddy. So Bell, accidental clash of heads, gets cut in the round and then gets dropped twice, once on a shot to the head. Four in his career to win, including in his last fight against Arthur Williams. You heard the corner say, "You got to win the next couple rounds because if that cut worsens and they stop the fight because of the accidental clash of heads, they go to the scorecards." It almost sounded as though they were saying, "Get ahead so we can stop the fight. Let the fight be stopped on the cut." Oh man, Bell walked into a combination. Bell's going to continue to walk into, and that's the key word. He's walking in. He should be on the outside. He's helping Davis right now. He is getting into the punching distance that Davis wants. He should make Davis earn that punching distance and take chances getting to that punching Davis. Bell is doing a lot of the work for Davis right now. He's setting up in close with a shorter arm Davis could be right in his zone. Well, tell you, they may have had the blueprint on how to beat Davis, but obviously, O'Neal Bell, in his mind, called up an architect and changed the plan. Yes, he did. Well, he doesn't have the experience. It's not that easy to stay on the outside. Lennox Lewis had 250 amateur fights and a gold medal from the Olympics, and that kind of competition behind him to be able to do that. Bell does not have that kind of experience. He only had 12 amateur fights. Davis very green, only had seven amateur fights. I give both these fighters a lot of credit. They've been learning on the job in the pros. Very little amateur background. Bell in a lot of trouble right now in this fight. Bell making it very convenient right from the outset for Davis. Not making Davis with his physical advantages, Bell's that is of height. He's supposed to make Davis earn his way in and pay a price to get in. <laughs> right now he's not doing that. Look, he's allowing Davis to set up shop on the inside and be in his punching area. Forget about the Lennox Lewis blueprint. He should have used the Robin Springs blueprint. Doesn't have those kind of legs, doesn't have that kind of temperament. And what you're talking about is to use the ring, get on your bicycle and move. Well, Davis just digging in. He's been allowed to be on the inside. And he's landing some good shots in this bout. I want to tell you about the best thing that's ever happened to my game. It's called the perfect club. Most golfers are uncomfortable hitting any club longer than a five iron. The Perfect Club extends the range of comfort by up to 25 yards by replacing your three and four irons. The Perfect Club is the easiest club to hit ever made. The length of the Perfect Club is 39 inches, which is one inch longer than your five iron. A shorter shaft means much greater control. The club face has 21 degrees of loft and a low center of gravity, which gets the ball in the air and keeps it there. The Perfect Club is the most versatile club ever made. The Perfect Club will become your most important and reliable club. It will become your go-to club. You don't have to change your swing to hit great shots with the Perfect Club. I promise it's perfect. Lucky Star Casino in Concho, Oklahoma, and just a few feet away, O'Neal Bell and Kelvin Davis underway, round number four. Bell got hurt in round.
round number two, suffered a cut on the right eye from an accidental clash of heads. And Teddy, here's a telling number for you. In round number one, according to CompuBox, Bell landed six of 41 jabs. He threw 41 jabs. In the last two rounds, he's thrown a total of 46 jabs. So Bell is not using his height at all. No, he's not. You mentioned the Falcon. He could do like Rave Springs did in his win against Davis. That is one of the ways you can go about fighting Davis. To use the ring. You can see Davis is one dimensional, very determined, very strong, but one dimensional, and he needs to be set to punch. You can use ring movement to keep him off balance. But that is not that is not the talent of Bell. What Bell needs to do is use height. Get on the outside, set his feet, use his jab, and force Davis to make mistakes. In other words, charge him for real estate. Couple good right hands there by Bell. Now Bell's having good moments on the inside. Both these guys are raw. As we said, neither one have much of an amateur background. So both are still learning on the job. So Bell can do it the wrong way and fight inside and still have success with Davis, but it's still the wrong way. He's still giving Davis his best shot to land something by being close. But that time, Bell used a double jab to set up a good right hand that landed. Now he's just giving a little bit of movement to Davis, just to the side a little bit. And that's enough with Davis, whose feet are square and does not deal with adjusting to movement. He doesn't move his feet around to make those adjustments to movement quick enough. He's fine coming forward, but he has trouble when somebody gives him anger. So far, a pretty good round for O'Neal Bell as he backs up Davis. One thing that I could see that give Bell credit for is that you made a point of it. He's mixing it up a little bit. He's on the outside, he's scoring a little bit, then inside he gets all the way inside. Inside those shots of Davis. In the round where he got damaged, he was in that medium zone. Not all the way in, not all the way out. He was in limbo and he got caught in between. Right now he's either all the way in or all the way out right now, Bell. And doing much better with it. And he stepped to the side a few times too. Oh, good shot there. So a much better round four for O'Neal Bell. Doesn't Miller Lite taste great? Blessed filling! Wait, 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 wait. What about this? Doesn't Miller Lite taste great? Great taste! Great taste! Blessed filling! Great taste! Best filling! Blessed filling! <laughs> what do you think about that? That's art. Tell it over a great tasting, less filling Miller Lite. It's Miller time. I've got an idea. <laughs> a memorable moment from 10 10 to 20. Hey, is that a dollar? I'm going in after it. <laughs> oh, I got it. I, I Just a reminder for cheap calls, dial 10 10 to 20. A memorable moment from 10 10 to 20. No way. Yes way. No way. I hate to be that guy. <laughs> Just a reminder, for cheap calls, dial 1010 to 20. <laughs> O'Neal Bell threw 90 punches in round number four. He steadied the ship. Now he's got that cut on the right eyebrow. That came from an accidental clash of heads in round number two, a round in which Bell was dropped. Bell's corner has a problem. They've lost the mouthpiece. Now they just found that one of the cornermen had gone down, had gone down with the mouthpiece, just came back and now Bell has his mouthpiece. And his corner was imploring him while we were away. You've got to win the next couple rounds. You have to win the next couple rounds because if that cut worsens and they stop this fight, they go to the scorecards. Yes, they're very aware of that. They've done a good job of controlling that cut on the right eyebrow. You see the numbers in round number four. High watermark for Bell in both thrown and landed. Some people are bleeders. It would seem so far that Bell is not a bleeder. As you said, that cut has been stemmed right away. Teddy's card, 38-37 for Davis. I have it the same way. Remember, Bell got dropped in the second. 
Now, I mentioned early on that Bell was cooperating with Davis, getting in his kitchen, as you said, getting in close, and allowing Davis, making it easy for Davis to be where the shorter man wants to be in close. He still let him get in close, but Davis is helping Bell because when he's inside, and we alluded to this early, he's not making the most of it. It's one thing to get inside the way you want to be. Where Davis is in close. It's another thing to do what you need to do. And that's punch. And Davis, we said it in the tips. You don't want to work your way in there and then not punch. There's a looping right hand that he caught Bell with because Bell was not all the way in, was not all the way out. He was in limbo. And when you're in limbo with a free swinger like Davis, you're going to get caught looping shots. And it all started with a lazy jab from Bell as well. Opens the door, exactly, Bob. That lazy jab opens the door. Not only a lazy jab from Bell, but a jab from too close. From the punching distance where Davis can time him. It was a nice move that Bell made that time. Instead of starting the sequence off with a jab, though, he led with the right hand and he nailed Davis. You know what's interesting? I said this was going to be an interesting fight. Both guys have opportunities that are right there for them in their styles. It's just a matter of executing. Davis is inside, he's, he's able to punch in there, and Bell is able to move around and keep Davis from setting his feet. And then Bell wins that exchange after Davis landed a combination to the body. Once again, Davis is shorter man inside where he wants to be, but not punching consistently enough. He's in close now, but Davis not moving his hands. He's been outworked this round by the taller man, even on the inside. Minutes, hours, days, who cares? Do things on your time. Panasonic presents the next generation of DVD recorders. All your favorite programming, all your most precious memories, all recorded on a format that's both durable and shareable. Networks may have schedules. I don't. Enjoy features like Chasing Playback, which lets you play your program back from the beginning while recording to the end. Watch what you want, when you want. Flexibility rules. Panasonic. Ideas for life. Okay. O'Neal, look. You, what, what in his mouth, Last in his mouth. We're going to see the, gonna see the right, right hand we'll coming up here, landed by, please. by Davis. Look. Bell with that lazy jab, Bob, you talked about it. Left the window I wide open. For that right hand to come right across, good shot landed there by Davis. All right. But with all that said, O'Neal Bell landed 13 more punches as you get a look at Tanya Harding. He was listed as a bantamweight. Fighting on June 13th. A little side show, Tanya Harding, the former figure skater, the Olympic figure skater. I'm telling you, on the last round, we showed that right hand that Davis landed, that illustration that you brought up about the looping right hand. But all in all, Bell, at least I thought, fought a pretty good round. Yes, he did. And he outworked Davis in his place, inside. That's bad news for Davis. He's going to get outworked on the inside. We already know he's not going to win the fight on the outside. If he's going to let himself be outworked on the inside, it could be a disappointing night for Davis. Bell hitting on the break there. And the right hand to the face of Davis. Bell got dropped in the second round. Power punches from Davis. He steadied the ship a little bit since then. Remember, Bell has the number one ranking for Wayne Braithwaite's title. Good up and back time by Bell. Again, Bell inside where you would think would be the territory of Davis. But what he's doing differently is he's making sure he's in tight. And he's working, and Davis is not working. He's in tight. He's not giving that little bit of margin of room for those looping shots because he realizes Davis needs a little room to punch. So if he's going to be in close, Bell at least is making sure that he's in close tight. Yeah, some of those right hands have gone behind the head of Bell. Good body shot that time by Davis. with one minute
minute to go. He's lost the mouthpiece. Referee Bill Marshall looking in. And even though the short, stocky guy is dangerous, Bell is winning the inside fight. He's letting his hands go. And you look at Davis as the power guy, but Bell's got plenty of power. And a much needed break here for Davis. While the mouthpiece gets washed off and replaced. No, no poaching. Connect so far, according to CompuBox, 30 to 8 in favor of Bell here in round six. Lead right hand. Some of it got a piece of Davis's glove. The body work. You know, Davis Bell. not only hurt there, but looks discouraged. No better way to discourage a guy than to fight his fight and beat him at it. You take, a, you take a taller guy, you go inside, you fight him, his fight, and you beat him at it. Now the shorter guy's got to say, well, I was inside where I want to be, and I still got beat. Well, because he's not throwing any punches. No, he's not. He's allowing Bell to tie him up. Big round for O'Neal Bell here in round six. Ah! You're watching Friday Night Fight, your boxing authority to the corner of Kelvin Davis. You all right, man? How you yeah, let me look at you. But so you guys gonna have to work on that water. Okay. Take it deep, Brad. Okay, keep him dry, because I'm gonna work on this a little bit. Yo, dog, you stand out there, you pulling out with your hands down. We talked about that, remember? Staying close. Okay, way to come back, way to come back. Okay, you want this fight? Teddy, some good action by O'Neal Bell. I mean, it's just too much water, man. Just moving his hands. Nothing real fancy, and choosing the right punches has a short man in front of him, so he brings that uppercut up to pick up that head and then puts something on top of it, gets the mouthpiece to come out, and that's probably what saved Davis there because he got in much-needed rest. Once again, you see the uppercut, the right punch at the right time with the shorter Davis leaning forward. Big numbers round for O'Neal Bell. As he landed almost 50% of his punches in round number six against Kelvin Davis, although Davis did not go down. Bell went down in round number two, but Bell has surged over the last three rounds. In fact, 38 of Bell's 41 connects in the seventh round with power shots. And I'll tell you what, in that sixth round, of those power shots landed. Bell landed 38 of 69 power shots in there. So, strong, strong round for O'Neal Bell. You know, even though Bell is on the inside with the shorter Davis, like we said, he's making sure that he's in tight. Not giving Davis room to catch him with any of those shots he got caught early in the fight, where he was in that limbo distance. Seven fifty-six for Bell. With Bell sweeping the last three. I have it the same. Watch the little subtle things Bell does. This guy's got good instincts. No amateur background at all. Hardly. Learning on the job. He's got good instincts in there. We'll see what the referee's doing. He's gonna get some loose ready. tape taken care of. But when we get back to the action, you just watch Bell. The little fine things he does inside, Bob. He uses his hands to turn Davis, turn his elbow, turn his shoulders, where Davis can't use his strength, can't get set to punch. Bell's smart in there, does instinctual things. And every once in a while, he parries a little bit. He pushes the shorter Davis back, a la George Foreman did, when he knocked out and pulled off that big upset years ago with Joe Frazier the first time. And also, Bell has step to the side just a little bit even when he's on the inside he's moved just a little bit yes, sir exactly what we're talking about on the inside bell will use his hand just to steer davis off balance turn his shoulders turn his elbow a little bit and use his feet to just move around davis just enough to keep davis from really getting set <laughs> Good right hands to the body. Block most of Davis's flurry. 
There goes Bell with that parry, with that little push. Get a little distance and hope to catch Davis coming in again. Just like George Foreman did many years ago with Joe Frazier. Push him off, get distance, and then try to nail him. Decent left hand by Bell. Davis comes right back with a couple of hooks to the body. Once again, Bell in the other man's territory on the inside, but knows how to go about it. And once again, Davis, even though he gets inside, not fighting like a short man, not consistently punching when he's in short. Final seconds of the seventh. This is scheduled for 12. O'Neill Bell and Kelvin Davis on your boxing authority. What are they looking at? This is an easy call. Nothing's proven to beat the itching and burning of athlete's foot better than boom. Tough act and tenac. It's the only one clinically proven to prevent athlete's foot. Rolling stands, tenac is still the toughest. Good call. Boom. Tough act and tenac. Coming to DVD, the best action movie of the year. Brosnan. Let's get down to business. Barry. I'm a girl who just doesn't like to get tied down. Bond. James Bond. Die Another Day, the two-disc special edition DVD. Own it June 3rd. Motorcycle financing can have a funny way of changing on you when you don't expect it. So keep your eyes open and get a straight deal that doesn't change with financing that's as solid as a Honda. Zero down payment, zero payments for the first three months, and lock in a low 6.9% fixed APR for up to five years on any new Honda motorcycle, scooter, personal watercraft, or ATV. Monthly payments that don't change. That's a straight deal. And right now, get up to $300 in bonus bucks on select models at your local Honda dealer today. Eighth round underway for O'Neill Bell and Kelvin Davis. Davis in the solid black trunks. He put Bell on the canvas in round number two. An accidental clash of heads in that second round. Opened up a cut on the right eyebrow of Bell. Bell has rallied back, though, over the last four rounds, and he's been the more consistent of the two to get right back in the fight, if not have the lead. There's two things that have really been the advantage for Bell, very simply. One, the real simple one. He's fought harder, he's moved his hands more. And he's had two dimensions to him. He's shown that he can work inside, he can be effective inside with the shorter Davis, and of course he can work outside. Davis showed so far has one option, get inside. Teddy, the corner of Bell pretty much reiterated what you have been saying. Keep him on the outside with the jab and then Shove him off you when he tries to lean on you. The blood starting to appear now back on that right eyebrow of Bell. They've kept it under control for the most part. Not a steady bleeding, though. Very controlled. Not flowing into his eye at all. Side where you would think Davis would be happy. Davis hasn't had to really work to get in there. He's been allowed to get in there. He is in there, but he needs to move his hands. He is not moving his hands. There Davis goes to punch on the inside. Finally, he lets his hands go a little bit on the inside. You know, funny thing, Davis is short. He gets where he wants to be, but he doesn't do what short fighters need to do. Consistently work and make the inside his place. Does not do that. He's being outworked on the inside by the man who, coming into the fight, would have thought he needed to win on the outside. And he's carrying this fight. Bell, the tall man, he's carrying it inside. Being smart. Now watch again with the arms of Bell. He puts them around the shoulders. Look, and he'll move Davis just a little bit to keep Davis off position. Davis is throwing more punches in this round than he has in the last couple. Were they effective enough? Rockstar Games presents... Midnight Club 2.
now for PlayStation 2. Coming soon for Xbox and PC. Midnight Club 2. Ready T for Teen. The Brute Tote by Rubbermaid, built to survive just about anything. Round number nine, underway. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller Lite. Bob uh, Papa uh, at this ringside. O'Neal Bell and Kelvin Davis. Davis in the solid black trunks. Bell in the red. Bell, the NABF and USBA Cruiserweight uh, Champion, is in position for a World Championship fight. Both guys with only one loss as a pro. Bell was dropped in the second round. Heard a couple times in the round. Came back, though, to regain control of the bout. Round number eight. A nondescript round. Tell you, you and I differed on the score in the eighth round. Well, you like Bell a little bit. I thought Davis landed some of the better punches, but... Davis coming out this round a little rejuvenated, at least early on, like he's been told what he needs to be told. Move your hands, pick it up. Once again, Davis in close where he would want to be. But it's not a matter of just being where you want to be. It's a matter of doing what you need to do when you're there. Davis simply needs to move those hands, rotate the shoulders back, create room, punch, create opportunities. And right now, Davis just waiting, looking for an opening. Create the opening. You don't have to wait to see it. Move your hands, the opening will present itself. And at the very least, you'll carry the fight on the inside. You're inside, you lay there. The other guy works. He's gonna carry the fight. Davis is still in this fight, scheduled 12 rounder. He's got that two point round in his back pocket. And, uh, since we're in Annika Soren's the mania, a mega golf analogy here. It's like when your weekend hacker goes out to play. If you make a birdie, sort of offset some of those bogeys along the way. So he's got that birdie in the second round. Davis just needs to string together a few pars here, maybe pick up another one and hop right back in it. But Davis needs to start teeing off. Once again, for the most part, fighting the other guy's fight, but Davis not taking advantage of it. There's some loose tape once again on the right glove. Cut it off. Davis. Oh, it fell fighting yeah. inside, not using his height. There's a lot of opportunities for Bell on the outside to use his jab and then to get Davis to maybe reach in and catch him with the right hand. But for the most part, Bell drifting on the inside, being just where Davis would want him to be, but getting away with that kind of inside fight with the shorter Davis. Tell you, according to CompuBox, Davis has outlanded Bell 19 to nine here in the ninth round. So on the inside, some of those punches are getting through. Well, Davis has picked up the pace this round and started moving his hands this round. Well, early in the program, Brian Kenny and Max Kellerman showed you highlights from boxing action last weekend. They have some more to talk about as we send it back to our Friday Night Fight Studio. Bob, Teddy, thank you very much. Uh, Nate Campbell, last time we saw him, uh, putting up a very good fight against Joel Casamayor. Well, he took on Tiger Martinez over the weekend, and Max looked surprised, surprised. It was Martinez being the aggressor, taking it to him. Martinez, you know, has a good record, but he hasn't done anything in his career to indicate that he was capable of doing something like this against Nate Campbell. Nate Campbell is a top junior lightweight. Martinez really dominated him, boxing him, but was, did, you know, a point taken away for a low blow on Martinez, and Campbell dropped him right here, and with those two points taken away, you could argue maybe Campbell did deserve a draw. So it ends up being a draw again. Nate Campbell, what does this mean for him in the future? Well, I think Martinez is the real story. He's established himself as a name at junior lightweight, and he should get another big fight after this performance against Campbell. All right, there you go. Bob, Teddy, back to you in the main event.
All right, thank you very much, Brian and Max. And that was truly a questionable low blow since Martinez had really not been warned at all in the fight. Uh, quietly warned, but not truly admonished. And it was a questionable low blow that cost Tiger Martinez the upset. Well, you would know you had the best seat in the house. You were calling the fight. One point. Low and now blow. we're getting a low blow here. Point. Low. Taken point. away low. from O'Neill Bell. Every time, now I want him up. Yes, sir. It was a low blow if you said it. It was right on the money. Get it in. Let's go. Time in. So a huge Box. turning point right here. Yeah, Teddy, we talked about Davis scoring the knockdown in round two, two point round. Now, if Davis goes out and fights a good, balanced round here and outworks Bell, not only does he win the round, he'll get another two point round. Big, potentially huge turning point in this fight. In the kind of fight, at least in my scoring, that Davis needed that help. And now he can help himself, as you said, by making this a 10-8 round, by working. It's not like he's not getting what he wants. He's on the inside. He's just where he wants. Bell is allowing him to get inside. It's up to Davis to do the work. All right, let's go to the corner of O'Neal Bell and his trainer, John Smith. And, and John, Bob Papa Teddy Ellis here in, in rounds four, five, and six. O'Neal seemed to be in a good groove, but he seems to be letting Davis do some work on the inside that he had stopped earlier. Yes, I don't know why. O'Neal's getting a little stubborn, you know, he's a little hard-headed. Then again, I'm not in there, you're not in there. We don't really know what's going on. Why he feels he can fight this guy like that. But O'Neal's fight is on the outside. He needs to step over, drill this guy, step over. Oh, and if he, and you know, time is shot. And this guy's coming in. Cowboy's walking to him, but if he times his shot right, he throw that right hand and put his body in, he'll, he'll get the results he wants. Oh, John, John, is it too late to get, as you said, Bell has been fighting Davis's fight. Early he was getting away from it, but away with it, but now he's not getting away with it. Is it too late to now get him outside and fight the outside fight, or do you have to stick with the inside the rest no, of the way? No, no, it's never too late. I think he can still catch Davis, hurt him, get him out of there. It's never too late. Well, what are you going to do to get him on the outside? We're try one more time to talk to him. I don't know what's going on. He's, you know, he's agreeing with me. He needs to be on the outside. But I don't know why he feels he needs to be inside. Maybe he knows something I don't know. You know, Cabell is a strong physical guy. Maybe he's made up in his mind, I'm going to get this guy out of here no matter what nobody says. So I don't know, but we're going to try to get him on the outside. But I got a feeling that somehow or other, O'Neal is a warrior. He's going to come, he's going to come together. He's going to get this guy. All right, thanks, John. He certainly did that against Arthur Williams. Trailing on all three judges' scorecards in his last fight, and then he finished them off in the ninth. Well, we said from the beginning, and it wasn't hard to see it, that the taller Bell was fighting Davis's fight. But he was getting away with it. But now, the last couple rounds, starting to pay the price for fighting his fight. And remember the subplot here in round number 10. Bell has had a point deducted for a low blow. So this could very well be a 10-8 round for Davis. And at least on my card, Teddy, it's going to be a 10-8 round for Davis. Keep it right here and uh, take you to the corner of Kelvin Davis. Nice work, Kelvin. Nice work. Got two more rounds. Pick it up. Work it. Here you go. Edge. Hey, you didn't grab. There we go. You're falling in on the inside. Move your feet, baby. Okay? Hey, we're going to take a look at the point deducted from O'Neal Bell that could very well make round 10, 10-8. Ten Not a real bad low blow, at least in my opinion. It was a little low on the little on the belt line, but not a destructive punch. Not a punch that was a telling punch. Not a punch that changed anything that was going on not a debilitating punch big price to pay for that punch yeah, and also not a ton of stern warnings giving no the no no leading up not to at that all. point you know not at all and then all of a sudden with, with a punch like that a little low just a little low below the belt line but not significantly significantly low and all of a sudden as you said a point bang is taken away a huge point now we should mention to our fans that that is not 
under the discretion of the judges. When the referee signals a point deducted, it's mandatory for that point to be deducted. So the judges cannot sit there and say, well, I don't think we should take the point away. It looks on the board. They've been instructed to take a point away. how the referee handles this one of those punches Six. you could argue was Seven. thrown Eight. the most devastating one the last right hand as davis was already down but the referee is not going to look at that and a lot of time left here and davis in trouble nope, davis gets rocked again by bell no, the referee's stopping, stopping. It, boy no wait a second I think he'd give him a, more of an opportunity than that. That was, that was almost stunning. He thought it wasn't gonna be done, but it's I mean, done. no doubt about Actually, it, I'm Davis here. was effective. One of those punches you could argue, you could look at the tape, and I'm sure Davis's people will try to make an argument later on, but you could look at the tape, we're gonna get a chance in a minute, and argue that maybe one of those punches, the most damaging one, the last right hand by Bell, was when Davis was already on the floor, but then, no doubt Davis is a little hurt, but as he's trying to get himself together, bang, the referee stops it. Wait, I mean, it's a different ref, but it's under the same commission's banner that allowed Sergio Soto to get pounded by James Kirkland about a half hour ago. Very shocking. You no doubt there was a knockdown. Davis was effective. No, he hit him with a punt, knocked him Yeah, but, I'm saying, yeah, but he, he kept losing. Well... Ain't no rule on that. Listen, so, you need... no doubt Davis was Eddie. effective, but he was up. And the referee obviously felt he saw enough. The hard way. So, Neil Bell keeps his NABF and USBA Cruiserweight titles, and he gets his 20th stoppage as he knocks down Kelvin Davis. I had Davis ahead by two points going into this 11th round. Now, here's the knockdown, obviously legitimate, no question about it. Davis gets hurt here. Davis inside. It's going to be with right hands. And there's another right hand. Well, it looked like Davis had both knees on the ground. All right, now we got to get to the end of the fight here. Now, Davis comes back out, and the action continues. All right, none of those punches are landing. There's a right hand that lands, another right hand. Kind of cuffing punches, Teddy. None of those straight, hard punches. No, 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 no extended punches with full power. As you said, no jolting punches. Yeah, you didn't see Davis's head snapping back or anything. They were sort of cuffing punches. And, you know, as I mentioned, we saw Sergio Soto being pounded by James Kirkland earlier. You would think that they'd at least give Davis a chance. Almost slapping punches with the right hand. And what was unusual, you see doubles and triples with the left hand, but it was all doubles and triples with Bell's right hand. So, 103 of the 11th round, kind of a weird ending. Brian Kenny, Max Kellerman are standing by in the studio. We're going to step aside and take a commercial break. More Friday Night Fights, your boxing authority after this. Morning. Good, but after cheating on me, he deserves something way more painful. Tell it over a great tasting, less filling Miller Lite. It's Miller time. I was nervous. <laughs> I need to go to the men's room. You want to come with me? Sure. Your hair looks great tonight. Thanks, just got it done. You're not a woman. Why use a woman shampoo? Try new Suave for men. Cleans just as good as her brand for less. With new Odor Readers Plus. Odor Readers Plus is the only insole with podiatric arch support plus protection on demand against odor and wetness. Not exactly a small person. Never have been. There aren't many things made for someone like me. Not many things at all. The Black & Decker Swivel Drill is. It works in five different positions, so I don't have to. It's pretty cool for a little guy. The Swivel Drill from Black & Decker. Want to make your car look like new again? Color Cure Color Enrich. They work for the biggest names in racing. They build the world's fastest race cars. But can they handle the junkyard? Gentlemen, stop your engines! 
Junkyard Mega Awards brings together three teams of engineers from the three major racing leagues in the Ultimate Junkyard Challenge. Build a red-hot race car from trash in just 10 hours. Who will win the Speedway Showdown? Sunday at 9, only on TLC. Bring it on! This month, get the best pay-per-view titles in the comfort of your home with DirecTV Pay-Per-View. You can order from a huge selection of new movies every week. With frequent start times and digital technology, you get immediate movie satisfaction any time of day. And you never need to pick up the phone. Just order using your remote. For complete listings, consult your on-screen guide starting at channel 100. Or log on to our website at directtv.com slash movies. 1910. Welcome back to Concho, Oklahoma. Well, here's the knockdown in the 11th round. O'Neill Bell puts down Kelvin Davis. Teddy, you don't like the fact that Davis got hit, though, when he was down. Well, here's the he's first down. one. He's down. He's down. He gets hit again. And it seems like that one puts him in a worse position, obviously. Falls flat on his face. Gets up. And now we're going to see the other sequence with leading to the stoppage. All right hands. Cuffing shots. There's a good shot. But the rest of them cuffing shots. No doubt Davis is hurt. But after what we've seen earlier tonight with other fighters being treated like punching bags, Davis should have at least been given the benefit of the, the doubt at some point. I think but the referee could have just gave a little more time. All right, that wraps it up from Concho, Oklahoma for Teddy Atlas, Brian Kenny, Max Kellerman. Bob Papa saying so long. You've been watching Friday Night Fights, your boxing authority. Fasten your seatbelts. Baseball tonight coming up next.